What we're going to do now is we're going to, just to kind of get things going, we're going to test your knowledge or your memories uh, about the section. Uh, does anybody know when the family section was actually created? The family law section was created on June 5th, 1976. And I think Tina said tonight, there are presently uh, 1,689 members of the family law section. Does anybody remember what the section dues were in 1976? $3. <laughs> Who is the, I believe, the only past chair to ever arrive at the Institute uh, with face paint and fatigues on it? All right, let's talk about the Family Law Institute. The Institute certainly the biggest event of the year for the section. I think, you know, looking back and if you review through the summaries, really a barometer of what's going on in this section or the uh, family law practice at that time. And I think Chris mentioned, if you believe Steve Harper, uh, you know, it is the most well-organized, well-attended, um, and uh, most enjoyed CLA among all the sections. And uh, of course, it, it, it had to start somewhere and uh, so somebody tell me, when was the first Family Law Institute? 1984, March 1983. Who initiated it? M.T. Simmons. And if you look, we started out with a, a seven-year run at Sea Palms in St. Simons. I was talking to Chris Olmstead actually on uh, on Monday, and I, as I was putting this together, and I said, "Why did you leave Sea Palms?" And he had a pretty interesting explanation: Sea Palms burned down. <laughs> <laughs> Wilbur, I remember you had made mention that uh, of the, the first meetings of the section. I believe you said they were held at the Marriott Hotel downtown. Pro roughly six people showed up for breakfast. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. There was no section then. In the late 60s, I didn't get there in the late 80s. The late 60s. <laughs> Josh Turner, Kinghead, Mildred, Mildred Kinglaw. She was chasing Paul Kinghead. It was a funny thing at breakfast. <laughs> Well, we would just meet at the Marriott, which is on Cortland Street at the time, and we'd have breakfast. And there was no section, there was no agenda, it was just talking about the general BS that we go through. You know? So we had a good time, and then in 76, Jack Turner came with me and said, you know, I think we need to start a section. I said, it was fine with me. Let's go with it. So off we went. That's how I got started. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and it, was, it was in 1976, uh, Jack Turner published the first Family Law Section newsletter. 1977, Jack Turner became the first chair of the section. After, after uh, Conley Ingram, uh, Kai Stone uh, is our, our second longest tenure chairman here, or actually, he's the first long, he's the longest tenure chairman here in the tennis. We hope Jack would be here. And if Jack's not here, then that makes Kai the longest tenure chairman in the tennis. M.T. Simmons was our sixth chair. And it was M.T. who initiated the Family Law Institute. So M.T., how did, how, did, uh, how did that come about? As best I can remember, <laughs> Barney Brown was in law school with me, and Barney called me and said, you all need an institute. And it should be similar to that of uh, the uh, real estate bar. And Barney came over to my office and he met with, as I recall, Wilbur Warner. I think Ned Bates was there. Maybe Kais, I don't, I don't remember. But anyway, we talked about doing a family law institute. We initially thought about doing it for people who did nothing but family law, who specialized in family law. And our first few institutes were really for people who uh, practiced almost solely in that area. Of course, it's expanded over the years, and um, 
which I'm proud of that it, it has. Wilbur was our first first chairman. Uh, I'm probably the only uh, uh, chairman who did not have to do the chair of the Family Law Institute. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that was smart. I remember when I took over from Kais, I it was one requirement when they asked would I be chairman, and that was Jack Turner would continue to do the newsletter. I remember that. Which he did for a number of years. He agreed he would do. And uh, another thing I remember is uh, at some point, I think when Nancy Lawler was chairman of, of the um, section, she wanted to expand the newsletter, and she asked if I would be associate editor, and it was to try to bring other people in other than Jack, because it had been his sole, yeah. sole uh, thing for a number of years, which he did a good job with. And so I, and so we did expand it, and it has expanded uh, to a great, great newsletter, I think. But it's been a great section, and I'm very proud of it. And that's the reason I continue to come. Yeah. Yeah. And in 1983, Wilbur Warner uh, was the program chair for the first Family Law Institute. Uh, Wilbur, how did you guys decide on sea palms? Well, we didn't have a lot of places to go at that time. <laughs> <laughs> that was back before we had out. no money and no place to go. We were start doing it out of the back of my car, John. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't work, Wilbur. Just talk loudly. Just screaming. You know, on a personal note, and I won't take this second, but uh, I thought I was at a, an alumni meeting of one million banks when I came in here. <laughs> <laughs> So we go, we haul off down to sea palms, and uh, we had, uh, well, the program is in the handout, but we didn't have a whole lot. We probably had 20 people show up. We were sea palms. Uh, Conley Ingram came. It was a two-day deal, and after the first day, 90% of them had gone home. <laughs> Our speakers weren't grabbing everybody. It wasn't good. But then we, uh, the second day, uh, Conley Ingram saved the thing, because he was doing, believe it or not, family law at the time. He comes down there, and he was uh, one of the speakers, and there were so few people out there sitting there in a room. He said, well, let's get off this lectern. Let's just come down and have a circle of chairs. <laughs> so he came down there and had a circle of chairs, and everybody stood around the second day just kind of talking about what the hell was going on in family law. So that's how it started, and uh, I did very little to, to uh, do it, but... I'm proud of it, and uh, it's taken us a long way. Thank you. 1986 was when the first child support guidelines were implemented, uh, and we, that's credited to John Gerardo, the 11th chair of our section. Uh, I'm, I'm proud to call my, my mentor, Ned Bates. Ned. Whoa. Any uh, any recollections, memories that stand out from your term as chair? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, pretend it works. Yeah, it's yeah, it work, yeah, it working now. I was just looking at this thing. I, I spoke at seminars I don't even remember. <laughs> well, but one thing. I don't remember what I did yesterday either. But, uh, but you know, the section is amazing. Everybody said it, but my perspective is, when I first went to work for the law firm of Westmoreland Hall and O'Brien, and then before I got there, Donald Bryan left and it was Brian, Wilbur recruited me out of law school, 
they didn't tell me they did divorce cases. Right. And so I get there and I find out they're doing all these divorce cases and I ask Wilbur and he says, yeah, they didn't tell me that when I came in. <laughs> and so when people used to ask me, well, what do you do? I said, well, I'm a lawyer. What kind of lawyer? Oh, I do litigation. You know, it's like a deposition. I don't give any information. I just ask <laughs> you know, well, what kind of Good. litigation do you do? Well, uh, personal, but not personal injury. <laughs> uh, do you do estate litigation? Well, some, yes. Uh, well, what kind of litigation? You know, well, you don't do this. You know, no criminal. No, no criminal. Uh, well, actually, ha, uh, ha, ha, ha. I do some divorce litigation. Uh, and so I, I was really... I, mean, I admit, I was embarrassed to say that's what I do, and I uh, and I really didn't want to do it. I did anything that the firm had except divorce. I would do truth in lending defense. You couldn't win. E E O C defense. You couldn't win. Give me anything, anything. I, Wilbur and I, we grab. I, I didn't get me appointed as the straw man in estate litigation. I didn't have a client, but I could go to court and argue. You know, for the straw man. I do anything, don't let me do divorce cases. But then eventually, eventually, what happened is in 80, Stokes, Stokes comes along and all of a sudden the light bulb goes off and I say, you know, this is what I've been doing except it's personal. This little commercial litigation where people are fighting over property and all of a sudden, that's what divorce is gonna be. We're gonna have experts and we're going to have tax laws, and we're going to have all this stuff. It's really going to become more than what my partner Wilbur used to say. We just, just used to go down to the courthouse and say bad things about each other and hope that the jury liked my client better than yours. And this is going to be more interesting. And truly, that's when it all started. That is absolutely when it started. And I decided I'm going to do divorce work. I'm going to admit I do it. And, and, uh, uh, and I went to the Nuts and Bolts seminars. It was like doing a research paper for a law review. I've researched all the laws in the whole country on equitable division. Nobody, uh, we didn't have an equitable division until the Supreme Court said we had it. We didn't know it. And I remember thinking, this is like a big jigsaw puzzle. And it was called equitable division. And we don't have any statutes. There's nothing. Nobody knows what it means. So we can go to court and argue whatever we want to argue. And, and then the Supreme Court said, no appeals. So we just, we just go down there and we make our own law as we go. It's a divorce lawyer's dream. So then this section took off. Chris Olmstead, our 14th chair. Um, Chris, anything that you'd like to share? Please. Well, just a couple of things. And thank you to the First Institute and then Wilbur. Let the scene. <laughs> called me and asked me to participate and said, I want you to talk about expert witnesses. And you got to fill an hour. So uh, it's kind of at a loss. I went down and met with my former partner, Marvin Schub, and said, what can I talk about for an hour about expert witnesses? And now we've got seminars that are three days long and talk about expert you know, witnesses. And the only other thing I'd like to mention is I sort of, with apologies to the prior chairs, decided that when I was chair, that I was tired of just these plaques we got. So, <laughs> so all of you subsequent chairs did now receive, receive Frable. Well done. I think we need to know about the history of the Olmstead. Olmstead, you all know about, or at least those of you lawyers know about the Fifth Amendment. Yeah. Privilege yeah. against self-incrimination, where you say, I don't know because I don't want to remember. Right. And I don't have to tell you because the law says I don't. But the Olmstead fits a narrower niche. And I remember an institute, I think John Mayhew was the chairman it's of it. It's all his fault. And Chris was presenting on some topic which is lost in antiquity. And he was asked a question by someone in the audience, and he said, I don't know, an answer to it. No lawyer says, I don't know. They say something else. Uh, I'm not sure, let me defer to, let me suggest, but they never say, I don't know. So out of that honesty arose what we call the Olmstead. 
And whenever you don't know, you just say, I'm taking an Olmstead. <laughs> child support obligations and I went to the Board of Governors meeting and was told by Bill Smith that it was not within the scope and purpose of the family law section and of the state bar. I asked if protecting children was not within our scope and purpose. <laughs> it was no. our scope and purpose and I was promptly told questions were not allowed from <laughs> the individual presenting it and then they had a vote. There were about 40, I guess, members, and what hurt Wilbur was it was 40 to nothing. 
No. <laughs> against, and I came up to Wilbur afterwards Rick, and said, good. my God, I thought I had you. <laughs> and to his credit, he said, 39 to 1 or 40 to 1. <laughs> Does it really matter? No. And so the bar did not allow us to pursue that, though thankfully it did later get taken care of. In, uh, in 1995, the Family Law Section Professionalism Award was established. Uh, the section, in conjunction with the Convocation on Professionalism, established this award. It uh, was given in recognition of the person who the section deems to have most exemplified the aspirational qualities of professionalism in their practice as a lawyer and or judge. Here you see the list of past recipients. In 1999, the award was officially named the Joseph T. Tuggle Jr. Professionalism Award. Yeah. It, was, uh, it was given to, uh, to him shortly before his death in 1999. Uh, John Mayhew spearheaded that, and I can tell you, uh, having been there, that um, there is truly uh, no greater honor that he cherished more than that, and John, I, I thank you for that. But in, in 1996, uh, the chair received the, the Section of the Year Award. Uh, Nancy was our chair. Um, was that, I believe, it was the first time the chair had received the award. In 1996, the, the Family Law website was also created. It was actually created at the same time as the State Bar's website. In two, I think we, we covered that Jack Turner was the editor of the newsletter of 2000. In 2000, the torch was passed, and Richard Nolan became the editor of the section newsletter. Uh, and then we get into 2001, 2002. Uh, Elizabeth Lindsay was our 25th chair of the section. We clarified that during her term, we did receive the section of the year award. Uh, moving on, the timeline of 2002, the newsletter was posted to the section website. We've heard a lot about the pilot project. Um, Bill spoke of his involvement with that, and I think that is, was truly uh, a, a big development for the section. Um, going back to the timeline briefly, in 2005, uh, the torch was passed on the, on the uh, newsletter. Uh, Randy Kessler and Marvin Solomani, and Marvin is here, became co-editors of the newsletter. And uh, I think uh, they have done uh, a tremendous, tremendous service to the section in terms of the, uh, the newsletter. Um, in 05, that was also the beginning of the Family Law Committee of the YLD. Um, I'm particularly proud of that because to date, um, and hopefully many of you have had the opportunity to attend the annual fundraiser that we do, the Supreme Court, um, that benefits the bridge. That's a home for abused and neglected adolescents um, in Atlanta that, um, that we've raised to date over $70,000, so that's great. <laughs> that takes us to 2006. Um, received the Section of the Year Award under the leadership of Steve Steele, and then taking us into 2007. All that hard work paid off in 2007. Child support guidelines uh, went into effect. Also at the Institute in uh, 2007, I think a significant moment for the section. Um, Kirk Cagle was the program chair at that Institute. Uh, we had all the Supreme Court justices attend. Uh, and, uh, they presided over a mock trial, and the attendance at the, at the Institute that year eclipsed 400 lawyers. Um, it's tremendous. Good job, Kirk. Thank you, Kirk. 2007, keeping the dream alive, uh, Shield, uh, <laughs> under his leadership, we got uh, know, section of the year again. say well two more things one is the the uh, seminar that I chaired we had 25,000 lawyers there 
or something close to that. That was What? Whatever it was. Let me just con contrast that okay. humble right. statement with, um, I want to recall, and anybody who was part of this, please raise their hand because it was so long ago and I was so polluted at the time that I don't remember who was in the car. But I have to share this with you, and my wife is listening and hearing this for the first time. But in about 1984, I was um, fortunate enough to attend my first annual family law seminar in Flea Bite City, wherever it was, Seapons. Flea Bite City is how I was. It was a dump. It was a real dump. And the highlight of my memories for that evening, for the, for the weekend there, was uh, spending the night at the local bowling alley. <laughs> Does anybody recall being with me on that evening? <laughs> I recall. I recall being. Are you there, Chris? Chris, are you there? Anyway, I recall being. I recall. I recall this night. Anybody else there can join in the memory. Shut up. I took the deposition of a woman the other day that was there. <laughs> Say because my time is quickly going out of the hourglass, and my wife is looking at me. But I recall very vividly that in the car driving was one Stephen Clifford. We were leaving the bowling alley. Stephen Clifford, Ralph Perdomo. Okay, y'all remember him? I don't know if he's still alive. He's not alive. Sure. Stephen. Stephen should not be alive. Ralph Perdomo, Stephen Clifford was driving, and uh, George Stern and I were in the back seat. Anybody else? Were you there, Martin? <laughs> 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 the evening at the bowling alley, okay, drinking beer and bowling, and Stephen was driving us back to the hotel. And all I remember about the event, and this is my first memory of the family law section, which is dear to my heart, was Stephen driving down a one-way street with his teeth on the steering wheel going the wrong way. Thank you all. She was our 30th chair. <laughs> Um, and Kirk follows. He's our thirty-first chair. Clearly, clearly his institute uh, was, uh, you know, he was exceptionally received. And so, uh, Kirk, you want to tell us about the things that followed in your term after you dominated the family law institute? <laughs> People are leaving. <laughs> is how these older people remember all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, my, have you all done anything since 1976? <laughs> <laughs> God. Well, come on. Come on into the, into the cart. <laughs> but Wilbur. You made no McHugh. McHugh. <laughs> you think those of us that have come and that have done the institute, that have done the the section since, yeah. but I'd like to start with you and Ned and everybody else that was there before us. Chris, thank you for starting the section and for making it what it is today. All right, Ed, proudly, you have the last timeline entry, and it is that we won the section of the year award under your leadership. I want to visit it inside the room. <laughs> <laughs> and and I met John Mayhew. <laughs> and he said, Ed, you don't belong inside the perimeter. <laughs> and he told me and my client, go away and don't ever come back. <laughs> and, and we did. All right, before we conclude, we have one bit of help, uh, one housekeeping item. Um, We'd like to pay special recognition oh, to one person who's in the room oh, tonight.
there was Bob Boyd. Because Bob called me up and said, I want you to be on the executive committee. And that changed my life, uh, professionally and personally. And I would never have gotten to know all of you like I've known you and really care about all of you if it hadn't been for Bob. It's amazing what one telephone call can do, but it did for me. Now, getting down to something serious, I do have a few more Almond Brothers tickets. <laughs> We're heading to New York on March the 20th. We've got uh, 66 people going with us this year. So if you're interested in going to catch us some rock and roll in New York in March, uh, let me know, and uh, we'll put you on the list. Thank you. Unless anyone else has anything to add, uh, that concludes the program. Thank you so much for everyone for being here.